Hey everyone, this is Officer Matt Coffey. I'm here with Officer Ryan West again. This is Dixon Police Podcast Episode 2. We're going to have a very special guest uh, this episode. It's going to be Sergeant Lincoln Sharp. Stay tuned. Yeah. So at first, uh, first just seem to be a little bit of a success, locally at least. Yeah, yeah, we've not too bad. Couple, couple hundred views so far. Yeah. So it's better than, better than none. Yeah, it's better than none, <laughs> right? So what people probably don't realize is we made that one, and then we presented it to the chief like as a complete thing because we had pitched the idea to him. And he's like, ah, I don't know, we'll see. So we got one of the deputy chiefs on board, mm-hmm. did the entire thing, and then presented it to him. Like, well, have a listen, see what you think, and actually like briefed it to him and kind of how it would run. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, got the green light for we it. Did. So we did get the green light. Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit for him. To Chief, in, he actually texted me, and was appreciative that we're putting ourselves out there and doing something new here. Yeah. So he's uh, he's looking forward to it. So yeah, he good. actually had the idea. He was like, "You, you guys should have done it in the interview rooms." And they could call it like the interview. We, we, I was like, "That's I actually think, a pretty good idea." I think we need to do that. That'll be <laughs> that'll be awesome. The, yeah. Uh, oddly enough, the acoustics in there are horrible. Yeah. But it's something maybe we can we can try to work. Around. Yeah, we'll make it work. Yeah. Yeah. So th- this week is uh, or this week this episode is just a little bit different than uh, the last one, not by much, but uh, this stuff might be a little bit drier here initially. I'm talking about some uh, some laws and how mm-hmm. to not get pulled over for certain <laughs> things, but yeah, uh, bear with us and we'll we'll get past that. It's only a few minutes long, and then we'll get yeah, into not too much talking with Sergeant Sharp and uh, his time here and actually his influence on social media as a whole and kind of how it's grown to what we have now. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. Sweet. So recently on our Facebook page, a couple months back, we posted something about mandatory insurance suspension on vehicle's registration. So what's happening is that we're running people's registration just to do a registration check on our squad, our computers, and it's coming back as suspended. So we're trying to help people like kind of get smart on this to prevent you know, basically getting stopped by us or any other uh, law enforcement agencies. So yeah. what, what's happening here is the Secretary of State goes through a third-party vendor, and they send out letters in the mail to verify that people have insurance in their vehicles. This started a couple years ago. And then the people have to respond in that mail and send it back to them so they can say, yes, I do have insurance, or they contact their insurance agent. Their insurance agent logs on to uh, that third-party vendor website and goes through it and verifies it there. However, as uh, we're about to hear from Matt here, it doesn't always work that way. No, it doesn't. So what you have to do... There's multiple attempts to verify your insurance. So three or four attempts, I believe it is. There's an initial verification attempt, a second after 30 days, and then the third attempt, the registered owner of the vehicle gets a suspension letter. That's if you're changing your address on your vehicle or your driver's license. So that way the Secretary of State knows your address and can send you the proper suspension letters or Illinois or the verification insurance verification so you can get it taken care of so you're not getting stopped by the police yeah. or any other agency yeah it's like something we see quite often people will have items mailed to whatever their address is on their driver's license mm-hmm. or in the case of vehicles for the registration it gets mailed to whatever the registration address is on the vehicle so yep. people move and they don't get that updated and the Secretary of State mails it to the other one and it doesn't always get forwarded to their new address. Yeah, and that's why that's why there's a law in Illinois that you have to change your address. I believe it's 30 days um, yeah, from, I believe that's like what that. it is. But yes, you, you have to get your address changed because of things like this. Because everyone we stop is like, well, my plates are suspended? Yeah, and it's showing a mandatory insurance violation. And then I say nine times out of ten, we're getting valid insurance cards. Drivers are valid. It's just, it's just something that, you know, people when they think it's junk mail, just take a second look at it and get a hold of your insurance agents or the Secretary of State's office, and it's actually a fairly easy fix. Yeah. So, what, so one of the best parts about that post that we made was actually our local insurance agents around the area commented on it, saying like, "Yeah, it's too easy for us to take care of this. It, it happens all the time. So, like, get a hold of us. We can verify it on this website. It's super quick." And I'm told, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm told that within minutes it's supposed to show up in our system as showing it's actually valid. Um, yeah. don't, don't hold me to that. I've well, heard that's, that from, heard that's that from nice. someone else. That's what you're well, saying. But. That's nice. The power of social media with mm-hmm. our social media sites and then technology these days is, you know, how technology is. So sometimes it's awesome, sometimes it's not. But if it shows up in minutes, like within minutes, then uh, that's great for the 
registered owners, you know, so. Yeah, technology is great until it fails. Uh, yeah, which happens quite often, so. It does. So just as a, as a quick tip for today, so if you're wanting to possibly not get stopped by us and you do have insurance, it's too easy just to call your insurance agent just to verify, hey, can you just make sure that my insurance is showing through the Illinois state? Because the state randomly selects, I am told it is random, who it selects to see who mm -hmm. it is. And the whole goal of this is just to prevent having uh, many vehicles on the road that are uninsured. So, Yeah, I stopped I stopped a gentleman recently here. Like like we've been talking about, run the run the registration on the vehicle. It comes back suspended. I go up and you know advise a gentleman why he was stopped for the suspended registration. He shows me a valid insurance card. He shows me a verification email from his insurance agent that he has been paying his insurance, and he also got a verification letter from the Secretary of State's office, and it was still showing that it was suspended. But he advised, he said, I'll just get a hold of my insurance agent, and then he got it taken care of uh, rather quickly. So, yeah, yeah that's very simple, very simple fix, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so tip for today is just, A, make sure you have insurance in your vehicle, yeah. and then B, <laughs> make sure it is uh, verified through your insurance agent. Yeah. Now you want to start just like you've I'll, already talked to I'll, I'll introduce him. Oh, okay, all right, cool. Yeah. So stand down. <laughs> stand down. <laughs> stand down. <laughs> All right, so for our special guest this week, we have Sergeant Lincoln Sharp with the Dixon Police Department. He's been here for a while. Uh, when he's not here at work, he's can be found uh, doing synchronized swimming in his backyard pool. That's one of his favorite pastimes. <laughs> Big study in that. So Do Sergeant, comp competitions and competitions. Yeah. Right. Sergeant Lincoln Sharp, everyone. Thanks for having me. Yeah, our pleasure. All right, just some some pretty easy questions for you this week, Lincoln. Uh, the first one is going to be, what positions have you held here at the Dixon Police Department, and what position do you currently hold at the police department? So I started here at the Dixon Police Department in 2006. Um, I was in the patrol capacity for almost 10 years. Uh, during that time, um, I was um, a field training officer, a taser instructor. Um, I was involved in our social media pretty heavily before I handed it off to Officer West. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get more um, into that here in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. we will. Um, I help with our, a lot of our community events, um, specifically Shop with the Cop every year. Um, and then I moved to investigations where I was a detective um, for four years. During that time, um, I was on the Illinois Crimes Against Children Task Force. Um, and then after that, I got promoted to my current role, which is a patrol sergeant. Very good. That's, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we'll, we'll, we'll jump into the social media aspect. You, you brought that up, and I think most most people who are familiar with us, they, they know that... Uh, you had a quite heavy hand in kind of getting that running. You didn't start with you though, right? But you kind of took it and ran with it. Yeah, no. When we uh, when I kind of got involved, we had we had Facebook at the time, and that was it. Um, I had like on my personal side, I had Twitter, and um, I think it was mainly that at first. And um, I had seen some other police departments that had it, and they're pretty heavily involved. Um, and we thought of different ways that we could start, um, basically just more platforms we can kind of get get out besides just Facebook. Um, so we started um, Twitter um, and enjoyed that for quite a while. Um, we introduced Instagram as well. Um, we even went to um, try Snapchat, but Snapchat's a kind of a different animal and it was hard to kind of get, get that one going, but uh, pretty heavily in Twitter. Um, and then when I moved up to investigations, just different style of work, it made it difficult to maintain it. And that's where thankfully, Ryan, you stepped in and kind of helped carry the reins. So yeah, so you and I worked on the same shift for quite a while before you went upstairs to the detectives. So that, that was kind of my first exposure to it, as you were always, you know, trying to come up with new material for tweets and whatever else. And uh, uh, as you can definitely well attest to, is uh, the more group, more people you have involved in it, the, the easier it becomes. So trying to come up with some idea on your own every single day for a, a post or something like that. So the group efforts uh, definitely huge in that part. For sure, yes. Yeah. A smaller department are or calls for services compared to, you know, some of the, the bigger cities I would, I would follow, like, you know, Baltimore PD with all the different specialized units they have. It's, it can be a little more challenging. So yeah, like you said, it's, it's important to have help from other people, whether it's just getting ideas from them um, or sending them pictures while they're working stuff to post when I'm not working. So just kind of a tief effort in order to stay relevant and stay active. Yeah. Some of those bigger departments, they probably have like specific positions for like a you know, public affairs officer or something, whatever they would call it. So that one person is actually dedicated to just, you know, 
doing social media stuff or, you know, however kind of interactions with the community. Whereas, you know, you can, uh, again, attest to it's, this is like an additional duty, something you do in between calls or whatever else you're doing. Right. Like specifically, I know like Sarasota PD in Florida stands out. Yeah. They got a, a full-time public relations, so social media. So that's all they, all they have to worry about and all they focus on. So that'd be nice. But yeah, like you said, for us, it's, you know, we're, we're balancing the, the calls for service and stuff we have to do versus this is which kind of extra uh, for fun, but it still has a big impact. So it's important. Yeah. We were, we were talking with a, with a guy from, uh, is it WIFR? Is uh, my, my state my line? State WTVO. Line. My WTVO. My WTVO. Eyewitness. Sorry. I, I think it was <laughs> yeah, my Eyewitness state News. Line. Channel 17. Yeah, yeah. They, they came down and interviewed us yesterday about the podcast, the, the first episode, and we were explaining to the guy how, like, what we got going on here where we record for a little bit, and then we get another call we had to go to. So we'd, like, press pause, go to handle the call, come back, you know, hit play again, mm-hmm. and start, start recording. He's like, You guys, you, you break it up that much? It's like, Yeah, I mean, we have to. It's just, you know, fit it in where we can. Yeah. Right. That's why it's as important as many officers, as many help that you can get being involved. It just makes it easier. And consistency, I think that's that's difficult too with um, the, the social media aspect. Just trying to stay uh, consistently posting. That's mm-hmm. that's tough. Um, I didn't know like when you've gone on vacation or gone upstairs and things just kind of died off. If, you know, I wasn't actively doing it, and I would go away, and it was just. Yeah, got the, the little meme of the guy poking it with a stick. It's yeah. like, come on, do something, do yeah. something. And that's where, yeah, you, you know, and a lot of it I would take, you know, my personal life and incorporate that. So when you're on vacation and mm-hmm. um, it wasn't even just all police related. A lot of our most popular stuff is stuff that people can relate to mm-hmm. outside of law enforcement. So it's food or, you know, Dairy Delight ice cream and some of the stuff that stands out that people can connect with. So that's probably been the biggest um, part of it is just that, that personal connection that people get. Yeah, we've always had that little phrase, humanizing the badge. I don't know if, mm-hmm. you know, that's something you came up with or something we took from somewhere else we heard, but I mean, that's like, I always try to show the, the lighter side of it. That's the, <laughs> you're, you're well in the uh, the camp where we are of not taking ourselves too serious, which has been <laughs> wildly helpful in, yeah. in terms of people enjoying our social media. Yeah, the, you know, the, the press releases and the, you know, it, it's good information to share out, but our, mm-hmm. our most popular stuff is, it's the funny stuff. It's the lighter side of law enforcement and us, the human side of it. That's what people really enjoy. So it's a, a balance of you want to actually be informative, um, but you also recognize what's the most popular stuff for us. Yeah. I, and some of the things we've stayed away from is it's like doing really trendy things. Like people do like, oh, we're doing this lip sync challenge. They're like, yeah, we're not going to do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll do our own thing. Come up yeah. with whatever we can. Or, or memes for that matter. You know, you got like <laughs> state police, like, you know, drive, hammer, get nailed. And it's like. Okay, I guarantee you there's not a single person in the bar who's like, oh, man, that police meme yeah. about getting nailed, that's that's going to prevent me from drinking. I actually, I actually yeah. created a graphic for that. Did you really? I did. Oh. Like showing that it doesn't work or? No, just, <laughs> just try to get that positive. But, yeah, no, the first part of your time, you're talking about, yeah, you, if you're the, the quick to get on a trend or do something, it, it can be good. But otherwise, you know, if it's so overdone, mm-hmm. um, I yeah. yeah, same thing. I was never, you know, like the, what was it, like the cowboy challenge and. Um, what's more, they're all like statue mannequin challenge, all that stuff that yeah. unless you've really got a great idea, it can get, get mm-hmm. a little overdone. Um, so that's where you have know, to try and be creative and be quick, you know, on a new idea. seems like everyone wants us to like sing and dance. I don't know if like they've seen us, like we're not coordinated. Not, I'm definitely not a singer. That's for sure. Uh, yeah. Nor am I a dancer. So some stuff we can't do and some we can't, yeah, like the yeah. carpool karaoke and stuff that I thought, Matt, I thought you did karaoke. My wife does karaoke. I I do not. I you just partake. I just sit and listen. She's actually good. I'm I'm not. I think I think he can do it. He's just being a little. <laughs> Let's hear a little, little bit. Modest. I am not gonna do that. <laughs> Country song. You guys know where we work. <laughs> not gonna happen. No one here will give you a hard time. At all. I'm sure they won't. No. That was officer, officer. Actually, officer Gannon. I did one. We did a video. It was uh, like a Moana singing one. We tried it, man. It was it was rough. Um, but just trying different things, getting it kind of outside of your, your comfort Wait, zone. And you actually yeah. posted that? Yeah. I don't even remember this. Um, yeah, it's been a long time ago. Do you it remember was... when Lincoln was sold in German? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah that, was, that was bad. That was, bad. That was really bad. <laughs> not, I'm not a strong whistler. <laughs> uh, Once again, uh, you know, you got to have fun. That's that's a funny that's, thing. Yeah, yeah. Some, some officers, they don't like being involved, but they'll do it. They'll be good sports, which mm-hmm. is... Oh, yeah, of course. You, you know, when you're trying to organize yeah. this stuff, as long as they'll just play along, they don't have to be super active. So, yeah, you get guys that definitely are willing to help out, and then others, you got to kind of got to hold them a little bit to yeah. get them to help you out. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, these guys in, you know, 
do all those dangerous things, but you put a, a camera in front of them and they're like mm-hmm. their neck gets all squatchy and they're like, ah, <laughs> yeah. oh, freeze up. It's, like, it's yeah. okay, just just be just be normal, just yeah. be you. Mm-hmm. A lot of people just mod us and they don't like mm-hmm. uh, getting out of their comfort comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a lot of a lot of guys they, they recognize the importance of it. Mm-hmm. Um, that doesn't mean like they want to like partake in it, but some of those guys are like, they'll okay, this is this is gonna be good. You know, I, I can see the benefit of this. I'll I'll jump in and help. Right, begrudgingly. That's all we can ask for. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess uh, so. From your standpoint, being the the social media guru that you were, kickstarting this, what a uh, what what kind of a advice would you have for uh, two young younger? I mean, you're like a year older than me. Younger, <laughs> yeah. uh, a younger and a young, <laughs> slightly young, <and> slightly young, <laughs> slightly younger. Um, I think just I mean, obviously, just staying relevant. You know, when you post um, once every month or two months it's just it's it's hard to stay relevant you're still gonna have mm-hmm. your your local support base that's there for you but if you're really trying to get this spread out it's i know we've talked if you can you know post a day even every other day just something you don't want to get you know feel like you're posting so much that Too it's much, just really yeah. mud, mudded down mm-hmm. um but that's again that's why i just stress the importance of having other people to help you out with ideas and even just pictures you're seeing or, or funny calls for service stuff that we can it's appropriate enough to to post about and talk about uh, that definitely helps um and i think we've like you've done trying to branch out into youtube just even if you can get 10 new followers from a, a platform if it's you know if it's doable on your part i mean that's that's what it's all about so it may not be the most popular but as long as you're connecting with somebody new and that's you know that's all we can do mm-hmm. yeah so you're pretty well known around the local area for your your water gun fights mm-hmm. that was uh like probably one of your probably biggest break-ins with uh Twitter. I mean, that one still gets uh, likes on Twitter now, e- even though like I'll open it up and I'll see like, oh, like, three new people like this video from like way back when. Like it's it's still, you know, got a little bit of traction. Still relevant. Still. Right. So that, that was probably one of your biggest ones. How, how'd that one come about? Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, I think might have, I saw some, you know, a, a squirt, not that any departments were like doing this. It was a big thing, but I think I just saw it. It was a summer. It was hot and I was like, how can we try to incorporate this? So, you know, we just tried it. Um, the first first year we did it, it was kind of on shift, which was challenging because obviously you're, you still have the responsibility to handle the calls, but yet you mm-hmm. want to do this. So we just kind of opened it up to a challenge on Twitter. We kind of prefaced it like the week before, like, hey, you know, get prepared. And there was like a picture I was with holding some water guns. Um, and basically as the day came, um, we just told people like, hey, send us a message with where you're located and your kids and, and we'll show up and have a quick, you know, minute, two minute water gun fight with them. And um, it, it kind of exploded really fast. And again, it was, it was hard because we were, we were working shift, but a lot of the local media caught onto it and we're sharing it. And before you knew it, we had just, there's so many people that we kind of get to because it just, we can only, you know, there's mm-hmm. four of us working and trying to handle that on top of it. So yeah, it, it exploded. I think, I don't know if it was maybe the first year, or the second year, we had a couple of videos that really went viral on it, um, that were, you know, worldwide, you know, had millions of views and stuff. So that, yeah, like you said, that really kind of helped us out, get us going. Um, and we've tried to, we did it there for, um, uh, every year for a while. I think yeah. the last, we didn't do it last year, but I think the year before we did, and it's actually got to the point where a lot of people, officers are willing to help out on their own shift. So we've actually recently done it to where like when we're off working, so we can just, a group of us can come in on our own time and just fully commit to just mm-hmm. doing that, right. um, versus having to help out with, with calls, which is nice. Yeah. I remember that. I think it was the second year you did it. Cause the first year, like I was in the police academy when it came out, I was like, oh, that was really cool. Mm-hmm. And then the second year I was working on shift when we did it mm-hmm. we still hadn't had a like a dedicated crew for it mm-hmm. and we we're in the middle of a squirt gun fight and like a, a disturbance call comes out all the way across town and remember all of us like running as hard as we could back to our squad cars racing across town we get there and we're all just soaking wet trying to talk to these people <laughs> like what what hold on like what happened we're like i we we're in a squirt gun fight I'm sorry right. <laughs> yeah um and that's why like so then we kind of switch in that's actually one thing that we had plenty of people volunteer for a lot of you know, the singing challenges and karaoke, you can't get anybody but this. You yeah. usually always have plenty of people that are willing to come in and do it. It's mm-hmm. it's a fun time. Um, so in talking about obviously you're going to have your critics, you know, the people that, mm-hmm. oh, you're, you know, this is what our taxpayer money is coming for. And we've always, our administration from here in, you know, with the police department in the city, they've always been huge proponents of understanding what what is the true value. And that's, that's the interactions we have with the public. So yes, we're, we're doing stuff like that. We're, we're building those relationships and that's, that's well worth it. So you'll have your critics that say, oh, you're wasting taxpayer dollars. You should be out, you know, running traffic or getting drug dealers, which we do. And it's important, 
we always recognize this is super important as well. Mm -hmm. So we've always, we've always had great support for that. And I'm actually glad you brought up the, the critics part because that's, I think that's probably one of the more challenging things is to like filter out that, um, the, the negative the feedback negative, you're always yeah. getting. Cause it, there's always going to be someone who's unhappy mm -hmm. with it. Um, I, I want to say one of the last times we did the, the water gun stuff with the, the kids, they got really big. You were, you were upstairs at detective stuff at the time. I remember uh, posting the videos and it got really big and people were like, this is so tone deaf and you know, wh whatever. Mm -hmm. And they, and it, people were sharing it and everything else. So like, it was getting a ton of views, but it was a lot of negative comments on it. And I remember getting like really worked up over it. I was, I think I was night shift at the time. And, uh, I was just like pacing around my house, like Man, this is <laughs> this is bad. Like everyone hates this. What in the world? And then, like you know, that was Twitter, and then I went on to Facebook, and like it was nothing but positive support because Facebook's more localized, right? So you're, you're, you're Dixon area, so like the local surrounding towns are like, oh, this is really great. You know, our kids loved it. They had a great time. Anyone that had any actual like affiliation with it was like pleased for it and supportive of it. Mm -hmm. And I realized like you know what, there's I can't get worked up over like what people and I don't know, other states right. think about us because, you know, like, they, they, they can just fire off these comments and whatever. But you know, I, I can't take them to heart because, you know, they're not here in Dixon actually, you know, understanding, like, why, why we're doing it, that kind of stuff. And yeah, I think I had messaged you, Lincoln, and you were just kind of laughing. You're like, yeah, I mean, you're just going to get that. Because yeah, you could have a hundred, you could have a hundred positive comments and <laughs> one negative. Yeah. And that'll just, you uh, know, yeah. make you upset, set you off. And mm -hmm. I know... We see it all the time with our posts even now, you mm -hmm. know, people saying, do your job. Well, that is our job, you know, community policing, getting out there, building those relationships, mm -hmm. um, especially with the younger kids. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we're, when they're older and they're like, oh, you know, I remember that officer that helped me out or that had that squirt gun fight with right. me or that unlocked my car. Like that is our job. That, that, that's why we're here. We're not here to arrest everybody and, and put them in jail. We're here to community police. And that's, that's a huge proponent of the Dixon yeah. police department. Mm -hmm. Like you said, man, those, a lot of those kids, they have some, they'll remember that forever. For, yeah, for you know, sure. They, you know, with our, even just with our Shop of the Cops stuff, certain community events mm -hmm. that people are like, yeah, I did that 10 years ago, I remember. Uh, but like water gun fights as kids, like, you know, squad cars pulling up and chasing them around. Like, Lights yeah, that's, on and that's, sirens going. That's awesome. And, yeah, that is awesome. And then going back to Ryan, yeah, you can't, if anybody spent any time on social media, you're going to know no matter what somebody posts, a person, a business, there's just keyboard warriors that just, love to live the life of just critiquing and complaining and they can find nothing positive. So you're, you got to understand getting into this that not everybody's going to be happy. You're going to have somebody like Matt said, you'll, you'll have a hundred people that are positive, but all it takes is that one negative, but you can't let that get you down. Uh, we've recognized from the beginning that you'll have the occasional, like Ryan, you're talking about with that water gun fight, the viral complainer from out of state referencing something that happened in their town. Um, and it, it, it's, it's pretty big as far as negative on us, but the positive outweighs it. And mm -hmm. as long as we have the smart support here and the actual t the people we deal with, um, when, when that start when that would change, or if, if people really had problems with it here in our community, okay, then we can maybe entertain doing something different, but we've never had, um, anything like that here in town. That's remotely. And they've, they've always loved it and you know, we're going to keep doing it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. One of the questions that we got asked in our interview yesterday, he's like, what, what's, what's your guys target audience? And we're like, I don't know anyone who wants to listen, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not like specifically targeting like a certain age group or you know, mm -hmm. some kind of metric in the thing. It's just, but you know, the more I got thinking about it, it's, um, it, the local area really is yeah, for sure. really what I'm more concerned about. Cause that's, that was the stance I had to take after that, uh, all that negative feedback on that one post was like, you know, what, what is my goal here? Is it to get more followers and more likes, or is it to like reach the local people who I actually interact with mm -hmm. and see them out there? Like uh, you know, we, we did YouTube videos for a long time and we've kind of had to pause on that just cause of a uh, call volume and, it's just life schedules getting busy uh, and I still get people all the time. Hey, when are you gonna make more videos? I'm like, ah, I mean, just don't have the free time to do it anymore. Like we did right. you know, right. during, during well, COVID and mm -hmm. no one was on vacation and everyone was working. Right. Well, YouTube's challenging, you know, cause I've seen the amount of work that goes into <laughs> making a video, preparing it versus, you know, a Twitter, Facebook, a quick post. It's just, again, being that we're not a, a full time, if you're a full time, you know, community service or social media, I'm sure you can make time to do that, but right. we just, we just don't have that. Then the, and you're talking about the target audience. I would agree. It's it's whoever we can apply to. I know some of the younger generation with Snapchat and TikToks and stuff. That's that's probably where that would target it. But we don't. It's a different style of social media. Uh, I'm not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. um, and even to this day, Facebook's. I think you mentioned it's still probably the largest largest base we have, and it's been that way for a long time. Uh, so that's kind of where it's at. And I think Facebook's probably a little bit of our older. 
middle-aged yeah. uh, population. I don't think a lot of younger kids are on it, uh, but it still gets the most likes. So mm-hmm. yeah, if we have like a like a missing dog or an update on like a, a traffic issue, like hey, this intersection is blocked off because of a large accident. Like we'll post that on Facebook and not Twitter because like the the following on Twitter is much more outside the Dixon area. Correct. Right? And just you know knowing knowing who you're going to reach and what kind of platform. So right. and this is just one more way to reach people. Obviously, I'm not going to. I'm going to do a podcast like, hey, there's an intersection blocked here. Right. Make sure you listen to the podcast. <laughs> well, that, that <laughs> speaks to power, too, because, you know, I'm glad you said that because, you know, with Facebook and, you know, what we've built up and how strong it is, you know, I can think of countless examples, but ones that stand out are, are like missing children. Mm-hmm. So we'll have a, a, a child come out. We make every effort to try and resolve it before we, like, post a picture of a kid. But it gets to a point where they're young and, you know, they're not, we, have, we have nothing to go on. Um, we've posted, and there's, I know, a couple examples that we've, within minutes, um, have people call them because, you know, you post it on Facebook, mm-hmm. and it's shared thousands of times within minutes, and, and we found them. So it just shows the base that we build up and how that can be such a positive as far as getting help from our community. Yeah, we just did that this last summer. Yeah, it was last summer. Yeah. Yeah. That's quick. Yeah, it's, it's funny. It's, uh, like, we put a lot of effort into a post, and it'll go, like, nowhere, and you put, like, a little bit of effort into one, you're like, yeah, whatever. It's it goes worldwide. Right? Yeah, yeah it, gets, it gets really big. Or... Mm-hmm. If there's an animal involved, if there's a dog, like it gets shared, you know, whatever six hundred times, you're like, what in the or, world? Yeah, or children. Yeah, yeah, yeah children, children too. Yes, involved, yeah. <laughs> I know, Ryan. You can probably test that too. That's yeah. Some of the posts that you you have schemed up for a week, and you're yeah. like, this is gonna be awesome, and it turns out it's nothing. Versus, like you said, some of the posts that are just on a whim. You do something quick, and that's the ones that go viral. So it's just that's why I said you just if you have an idea, put it out there. I mean, if it reaches five people, great. If it goes viral, that's great too. Mm-hmm. It's like your car seat one. That was, you came in that morning, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. You came in that morning. No, it was yeah. actually, well, I had the idea for it, like, the week prior. Oh, so okay. The, the one mass referencing here, we, we had a new guy coming in. He was starting uh, field training with us, uh, Officer Grady. And <laughs> I had, uh, the week prior, um, I was backing up uh, Cassie Dempsey on one of her uh, accidents she was handling. Well, there had been a car seat hauled or the kid needed a new car seat or something like that and we have a program where you know she helps out with car seat safety stuff so she had called in the radio said hey can you bring a car seat and i was like yeah it's fine whatever i'm walking out to the squad and i had that, like a light bulb moment i'm like oh Let's this is perfect because evan's coming here in like a week right. so i threw the car seat in there take a picture of it and then that was whatever i thought the okay. end of it and then gotcha. i think that one ended up reaching like 10 million people like viewed it yeah but it's still that was just like on a whim yeah like mm-hmm. it's you know yeah. you were just walking out and yeah light bulb moment and people trying to was. do like FOIA requests like I want to see pictures of him in it like well he wasn't he wasn't there he yeah. wasn't working that day I was just had it saved right yeah the people like that just like that they complain about it and look into it and yeah a lot more people liked that than people that disliked yeah. it though so yeah that's what you got to focus on yeah oh. ready yeah <laughs> so Lincoln I know you said that you started here in 2006 correct yeah Okay, so that would give you 17 years total. Uh, yeah, so I guess. yeah, so 15 here, and then before here, I was um, with the city of Kiwani Police Department. That's when that would have been 2006. Um, just police academy. Um, that's where I got hired first, um, and I had actually. I mean, I'm from Sterling, so when I was going to Western, that's where I went to college. I had interned here with the Dixon Police Department, and that that short time, I really really liked it here. So again, but my first opportunity was Kiwani, so I. I started on there, and um, I had tested here with the Dixon Police Department. So when I got the, the offer to come up here, it was, it was it was tough. I enjoyed my time down there, but it was to come back up here and be part of the Dixon Police Department. It was a easy decision. So, yep. So I've been here since two thousand eight. Yeah, I can I can second that because I started in Rock Falls and I was there for just under a year, and then came back to came back to Dixon where I'm from. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite part about being a police officer? That's that's a good one. There's. So many different answers. I know a lot of people say, well, why, why, why'd you be a police officer? Why, why'd you become one? Honestly, I, I can never answer that. It just is, I'm sure a lot of us, it was just kind of a calling, you know, from when I was little um, all the way up through high school and college. I mean, this is just always something I wanted to do. It was just kind of ingrained in me. Um, I guess since getting on the job, I think what stands out to me is, I know it's the cheesy, but just, just helping people, whether it's, you know, calls for service or just the simple things like, I know like Ryan and I were talking to unlocking your keys, how those small little interactions with people, how it's such a positive and lasting impression. So just that small stuff, being there for people, um, obviously our community involvement, um, being being active outside of our just normal law enforcement roles. Uh, people remember that stuff. And obviously we all live close to our community and we, we work here. So those impressions that we have, we see them out and about. Um, that's, that's, that's what does it for me. Awesome. 
this one might be difficult because you've had you've had some time on, but what is your proudest achievement throughout your career? That's that's another one that yeah. people say, oh, what's your most yeah, exciting call you've been on? I, or... I've got some peers that say, you know, you from day one, you should keep a journal so you can write down all the stuff because you just, as years go on, you, you forget some of the stuff. Um, obviously, we've all had our, you know, memorable calls, robberies and, and chasing people and stuff, but probably the proudest is kind of similar to what my favorite part is. Um, it's just those, those um, relationships you have with the mm-hmm. public, the people you know outside of work. They know um, the service that we provide, the dedication um, in our own time, work time. Um, I think that's what um, is probably proudest for me is just having overall involvement, just, just being respected and, and friendly, people that can remember that. Like, oh, I, I know that police officer. He did a lot. You like him. You know him. Um, so it's more than just you know, going out there and getting the bad guys. It's mm-hmm. just those, those community um, relationships, just keeping that going. All right. Well, hey, I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your super busy yeah, schedule. Thank you, Sergeant. Sure, Ma- managing a, no, this no crazy sorry. shift. No sorry, managing the interview. That, <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys having me. You guys are doing great. Look forward to it. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Move on to our obscure laws segment. Yeah. Right. What this did you is, come up with for today's obscure th- law? Th- this is a fun one. So I came up with, in the city of Normal, Illinois down by Bloomington, right? Yeah. You may not believe this, um, but it is actually illegal to make any kind of face at a dog. At a, a dog? A dog. Uh, who is enforcing this? I do not know. I, uh, we'll have to get a hold of normal and see if, see if they enforce it. <laughs> I'm curious as to how this law came about. And I'm what? curious as to what type of face uh, i mean can you not smile can you not frown can you not make a normal face can you not look at a dog you know what's it's... funny it's, it's funny about dogs is it doesn't matter like how you get a group of like just tough guys i see this in the in the army a lot mm. so you get a bunch of just you know whatever yeah. barrel chested freedom fighters <laughs> kind of thing and they're all you know rough and tough and whatever yeah. else and someone brings around a, a puppy, puppy yep. and then Every one of those guys, oh puppy! <laughs> yeah, it goes out. I think goes out ridiculous. the window. I, you know, if someone had a camera, but yeah, you know, and that's everyone. So, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a dog lover. I, I'm so. really curious as to where, uh, how they came up with this. So, like, yeah, you know what? I've had it. No more smiling at dogs. Yeah, I can't. Uh, this one, this one was hard for me to actually believe, but <laughs> I I found it on more than one occasion, more yeah. than one website. It it was uh, pretty. Uh, Pretty obscure, yeah. I would say. Yeah, actually, one of our retirees yesterday was was talking to me about some obscure ones that Dixon had, and I was looking through the stuff and I couldn't find it because I think 2020 they went through and cleaned up a lot of the old, really really bizarre ones. Oh yeah. And I was trying to locate uh, some of the older ones we had on hand because he was saying like you couldn't have, I think, I think the term was like flatulence in a bar, and oh, I couldn't geez. find it. Yeah, I was like couldn't find it. Yeah, yeah. It had, had to they, do with they, like, your personal conduct inside of a bar. They probably like, got rid of that one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. But the one I did find, um, and this is more of a just an equipment violation, but it's something that gets asked about. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many lights can be on the front of your vehicle? Oh, gosh. How many lights? Mm-hmm. Like auxiliary lights? Yes, or... we'll, we'll go with that. Yeah, okay, so how many two, auxiliary two lights? Headlights and then... So you got two headlights and your two fogs, usually. Those, are, those would be considered auxiliary. Auxiliary lights, yeah. Okay. So how many how many lights can you have total? Because we see all the guys who do all the off road and stuff, they have the big light bars, and their hoods, yeah. and their roofs, and everything else. Man, I'm gonna go out on a whim and take a guess on this one. Okay. Because I'll be honest, I do not know for sure, but I'm gonna just guess five. So it'd be five total with your headlights, the so three auxiliary. Oh. Yes. So I was correct. Yeah. In a way, yes. yes. In so, a way. Yeah. So, so two headlights. Probably two fog lights and then whatever extra light you have. Okay. Yeah. So wow. Now, now there's a follow-up question to this. Do oh, you know, here we go. There's a, there's a height restriction. A minimum and a maximum Ooh. height. Four. Okay. It's got to be a minimum inches off the ground, but no more than something. So I, last year, I took a Illinois Vehicle Code update oh, okay. refresher class. Test so you on it. this will be a this? test. I believe we covered this. 
because I remember in the class, the instructor, he was from the state police. Oh, okay, that makes sense. He, he, uh, he actually showed a video of a, it was a big pickup truck, big lift, wheels, tires, all that good stuff. And then he had just a ton of LED, mm-hmm. like 42, 50 inch um, LED lights on there. And I want to say, I'm going to, I'm going to guess on this one, but I, I think I'm right. Is it 42 inches? It, it is. It is 42 <laughs> inches. See, I, so I remember that was a no, year no, ago. No less than 12 inches and no more than 42. No less ground. than 12. Okay. Yeah. And no more than 42 inches. Yeah. Okay. I, I stopped a gentleman and he was driving early morning hours. It was like four or five in the morning kind of thing. And he had lights all over his truck. It was all lit up. Um, I, I had stopped him for speeding. It's something I'm un, unrelated. Uh huh. And for for those of the listeners who aren't aware, we're living like rural Midwest. Yeah. Right. And we have a thing called deer. <laughs> Lots of white tailed deer. Yeah. And so I stopped this guy. I go, What's with all the lights on your truck? He's like, Man, I fit like three deer in the last year. He's like, So when I'm out of town. I hit with all the light yeah, I can. Turn them on. And right. I go, oh, That's reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. I, you know, I'm not citing any. So were they anyone. above 42? Oh, yeah. Like they, they were above all, all, they were all over the truck. A, a giant okay. wall of light driving down the road. Yeah, it's nice having that discretion, too. Yes. Yeah, you know, it, that's which, one thing. Because, you know, he, he's driving between two towns. Um, they, he was only in Dixon for like a, a brief minute before he went back out of town, driving to one of the neighboring ones. And he's like, yeah, I've hit three deer on the road on the way there. He's like, I want to be able to see him before I hit him. Which in in this part of the Midwest... If you go from one town to another, you're usually going to go down a rural yeah. county road. Yep. It's going to happen. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So obscure laws for today is sweet. No smiling at dogs or making faces in <laughs> normal Illinois, apparently. And then, yeah. Uh, there, there's a kind of fun fact on lights on trucks. Again, lights. not something we it. typically enforce a whole lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they're driving in town and maybe they had a whole bunch of lights on, that might be one thing. That's but, different. Yeah. Um, we, we can definitely understand those guys who are in the rural areas driving trying to avoid animals absolutely yeah all right cool all right to wrap it up today we actually uh we're we're covering a memorable recent call um oddly enough matt and i came up with the same call because we were working on the same shift together so this one happened almost uh a year ago now it's crazy that it was it seems like just yesterday we yeah, were on that call. Yeah. So the fun ones really stick out. Yeah, they you do. Know, I mean, obviously some of the, the bad ones do too, but the, these fun ones are the ones you always kind of, the ones that are fun to tell the stories on. Yeah. People. So we, we got a call of a 16-year-old boy. Mm-hmm. Mother said, he's locked himself in the bathroom. I need help. Which isn't un- actually an uncommon call. It's not. All so the time, the teenagers uh, took their phone away, now they're locked in the bathroom. You know, and They're upset th- with mom and dad. Correct. Or, they won't come out, yeah. and it's just they're, they're being – teenagers you know mm-hmm. it's just the, the the usual thing so right like, okay whatever um and so we both go over there <laughs> <laughs> i i went over there initially yeah. um and it was a super old house with super old doors like old victorian old victorian yeah. locks with the old victorian skeleton keys, keys skeleton keys yeah and i couldn't i couldn't figure it out yeah, I, so, I couldn't get them out of there so i so what had happened was that the 16 year old had not like to get away from his parents, locked himself in the bathroom. He had broke the skeleton key off in the lock, <laughs> the lock and couldn't get out of the bathroom. Yeah. So <laughs> you don't have locksmiths on call for skeleton keys really <laughs> right. anymore, I don't think. Yeah. So fun fact, I used to live in an old Victorian house built in 1890 here in town. So oh, geez. we had all those old locks when I you know, mm-hmm. moved in. And so I actually had some, some working knowledge of you know, the, the insides of those. So the lady provided us with some screwdrivers and pliers and whatever else we needed. Matt was relegated to flashlight duty. I was, yep. <laughs> I held I held the flashlight. Well, since Ryan has experience in that, I just, I took a step back. It was my call, but I took a step back and I allowed, I allowed Ryan to, to handle the call and Lo and behold, Ryan yeah, figured we, it out and we, we, and got, we, got, out the, we got the kid out. Yeah. It, it probably took us. 20, 30 minutes. We were there for at least a half hour. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. at least a half hour. So, <laughs> so I just remember showing up talking to the lady. We're like, so, like, so what's, what's, what's going on with your son? Is, you know, is, what, what's the reason he's locked in there? He's like, oh, he broke the key off. We're like, okay. Like, like, why is he upset or something? Like, no. Like, no. He, he could, he's trying to get out. Yeah, like, and he was, oh. Yeah. He was very thankful too. Once we got, I mean, being locked in a bathroom for, well, at that point, it was probably more than a half hour. Yeah. But he was, he was super thankful, you know. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a good one. That was a fun one. That was one of those ones that we we're laughing at the rest of the night. Oh, yeah. It was just 
the, the expectation versus reality <laughs> showing up was just so out of the ordinary. And yeah. that, that actually happens quite often in this job. It does, like, yeah. Especially if you get um, some of the same people calling for the same things over and over again. So mm-hmm. you start to, okay, this is this is probably what's going to happen. Yep. Or, or you get a similar call to one you're like you've handled, and you show yeah. up, and you're like, well, I, did, yeah. I did not I expect wasn't that expecting this. at all. Yeah, and I made sure to snap a picture of Ryan in action, actually. Yeah, and that yeah. was posted to our Facebook account. I don't know about our other social media. It went to the other ones too. Facebook yeah. and our other yeah. for those accounts watching, as well. For those watching on our YouTube channel, we'll, we'll throw a picture of that up there. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So. Perfect. All right. Awesome. So that was our that was our most not most memorable call, but re- recent uh, memorable recent call memorable that we still one, yeah. we still laugh yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, appreciate everyone taking the time to listen. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you next time. We'll yeah. see you see you next next week, whenever it is. Yeah. Next time. For sure. <laughs> all right. Thanks for listening. Everybody. Thanks, guys.